In the past couple of years, there's been this popular conception that, you know, all you have to do with your psychology is master your intention, right? That's what the secret was all about. The secret was the law of attraction, the ability to use your mind and your thoughts to create good intentions, and those good intentions will hopefully bring all sorts of good things back to us in our life. And intention is very important, right? Because it's sort of sending waves out in the universe was the argument, the secret, and those waves will attract good things back to us. That's good, but there's more than intention. You know, in psychology, when people jump to this conversation about intention, they're missing a few rungs of the ladder here, right? It's not just about, intention is very important. What you intend to do and the thoughts that you're putting out into the world through your intentions, those are very important, but those don't drive people's ability to succeed in life. They don't drive people's ability to master their mind because there's more going on there. So let's walk through a typical example of how you use your mind and your psychology that ultimately impacts your life. And again, like I said, there's so much more that we can take on, but this is a short video, I'm gonna give you one idea that can hopefully support you. Before intention, there's a few things that happen. Before you set an intention or you set your mind to do anything, there's a few things that happen. And let me walk it through like a real life example of how your mind kind of works and what you do with it. First and foremost, before intention's ever set, there's information, and this information is going to direct your mind in some way or another, right? If, for example, if you're sitting around all day and you're watching Jerry Springer on television, that's a certain kind of information that's coming into your brain, influencing your thoughts, your beliefs, and your values, and then ultimately you're gonna have different intentions and you're gonna act differently in the world. Then let's say if you're reading Success Magazine or the information coming in your life is from mentors who are changing your life and giving you great perspective about how to succeed. The information that comes in dramatically, dramatically influences our intentions and our thoughts, true? So what information is coming into your life right now? Then the next thing that happens, once we get some information that comes into our mind, there's something that goes on in our mind where we take that information and we decide what it means. There's interpretation, right? Take any two people on a block and the information that comes in, they're standing on either side of the block, they're standing from pretty much the same vantage point and they see a car accident. Isn't it true that later on those two people report very different things? It's because the same information was coming on, right? Car A hit car B, that's what happened. But their mind interprets it different or any conversation, right? You might have heard the same thing from somebody else, information came in, but you interpreted it in a different way, and you said, well, gosh, she was being mean right there. And someone else said, no, no, she was kidding. And the way in which you interpret information directly impacts your ability to succeed in life. And part of getting to high performance is understanding how your mind is taking in information and assimilating, assimilating it and attaching meaning to it. And that's what interpretation is. It's like an event happens, is it good or is it bad? And how you label something, how you label something in your mind directly impacts your beliefs about it and your ability to perform in the future because you decide whether or not that's good or that's bad. Literally, the things, the way that you label information, your interpretation of it, will direct the ultimate outcome of your life because if something happens and you label, let's say something doesn't go right, and you label it, you go, oh my gosh, that was a failure, then you're less likely to ever try it again because you just labeled it as a failure. So the way in which you interpret things has a dramatic outcome on your psychology, but also in your performance in life. Next down is not only do you say, was that good or that bad, not only do you label it in that way, you also self-label. And in self-labeling, you now say, hmm, Not not only was this good or bad, you say, is this good or bad for me? And you attach a label to yourself. And so information comes in, and you have to think about, this happens every single day for people. In dramatic cases, in less dramatic cases. I had a car accident, that was information. I interpreted that as a second chance at life. And I took that as my job now as a person is to live so fully alive and so lovingly and so openly and so focused on making a difference in life that I'll inspire other people to start their own second life. But I've met other people who had a a, a dramatic car accident, even more dramatic than mine, but they attached no meaning to it whatsoever. It meant nothing to them and who they are as a person. So nothing ever changed in their life. Same thing can happen to somebody, but the way in which your psychology goes through it ultimately impacts how you feel about it and how you feel about yourself. 
So information comes in, you interpret it, you think about what does this mean to me, and then you start forming intentions. Oh, okay, based on all that, here's what I want. And you start forming your thoughts and your ideas and your beliefs around this certain thing. Think about this in dramatic cases. Think about this in uh, dramatic cases of not just a car accident. Think about this in any case in which your life you're trying to figure out something, you might go back. If you, have, if you ever have any beliefs, you're like, I don't know why I believe that. Go back and say, what information led me to believe that? How did I interpret that information? What did I say that means about me? Because your beliefs now were impacted by all of that. Now let's move on because there's more than just intention and people know this who watch The Secret. They thought, okay, well what happens after intention? Well, after intention, you decide to take some initiative. Right, there's initiative. You say, okay, so these are my beliefs and based on my beliefs, I'm going to act like this. That's initiative. Based on my ideas, I'm gonna act like this. So your psychology doesn't just stop in your brain, it activates in the world through your behaviors, right? Your beliefs lead to behaviors. Your behaviors lead to be beliefs. It's like this perpetuating loop between beliefs and behaviors. Where do your beliefs come from? They come from your information, the way you've interpreted information, the way you've identified it, the intentions that you've set. And then ultimately you go out there and you practice it in the world, and this initiative happens, right? This initiative happens where you start going out and you start doing things. And based on your level of success here, it feeds right back. All of this is sort of a self-perpetuating loop. And so your psychology is driven a lot by the initiative that you've taken in your life. And whether or not you feel that it worked and you succeeded at it. And whether or not you want to do it again. Intention is incredibly powerful, but you've got to understand right after intention, you've got to take action. That's the reason most people didn't like the secret. You read, you read this book about the secrets of succeeding in life and never in the entire book does it say hard work. Right? There's nothing in there about taking massive action. And the only way to really get high performance in your life is to take massive and focused action. The more action you take, the more success you're going to receive. As long as you keep going and you're doing things that are intelligent, you've got to take lots of initiative. So what's this last piece? This last piece is sort of hard to figure out. For most people, they, they, they get stuck in thinking that initiative is it, and then it loops back here. But there's something that's more important. And again, it's bringing that social world into your life. That social world in which your ability to influence others has a dramatic impact on your psychology. Because guess what? If you're going out and you're making all sorts of stuff happen, Right? You're, you're, doing every, you're taking in information, everything's great, you're taking initiative. Well, influence, your ability to influence an outcome, your ability to influence another person dramatically affects your psychology. Right? Imagine, think back to high school, the, that group that you couldn't influence and you were just so frustrated because you couldn't influence them. Didn't that affect your psychology, how you felt about yourself? How much more likely you were to think about good things and go out and try things? Right? There's a social piece to your psychology and everyone always thinks that it's just emotional intelligence. Psychology is not about emotional intelligence, it's about emotional and social intelligence. And if you don't think about your ability to influence other people, then you're never gonna become a high performer as we talked about at the very beginning. Becoming a high performer is mastering all of these pieces because all these pieces lead to your psychology. And again, this is just one idea that we'd cover at like High Performance Academy. There's a lot more to help you get the finer distinctions of how you use your psychology. Anything that's happened in your life, you can go back and run through this and it'd be interesting to see, wouldn't it? How you attach meaning each of the ways. You know, along the way, how do you attach meaning? Because the way that you attach meaning to all this is ultimately impacting your psychology and how you feel about your life. If you want to see an amazing clip of a young Les Brown, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. It was hard when just over three years ago, in the Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan, where I was operating my business, and I fell on some hard times.